Hey, welcome to the first episode of the Teacher Nerds Podcast. Uh, again, I'm Ron Nover. And I'm Joe DePaulo. And today we're going to be talking about uh, how things are going this year. Um, and, you know, maybe some things we've tried and, you know, how they worked out. Um, so I, I, I guess I'll start. Um, you know, one of the big things I tried this year that I was kind of nervous and excited about was I gave free seating. Where, wherever you wanted to sit, there third, you go. third grade to eighth grade. Nice. Um, you know, and, and a lot of the kids came in, especially the younger grades, and they were just confused. I bet. That I wasn't telling them where to sit. Um, and in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, I, I really gave them the opportunity. I wanted them to be comfortable. So if you felt more comfortable sitting on the desk, Ooh. sit on the desk. If you felt more comfortable standing, stand, you know. And funny enough, most kids sit in the same exact spot every time they come in. They're trained. In a chair. They're, they're trained. But um, I've given those options before as, as opposed to where if you want to stand, you can stand. Right. But you have to stand on two feet. And and after two or three minutes, everyone sits back down because right. sitting is more comfortable. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's funny. Does anyone have those types of chairs in their home? No. You know? No. Because yeah. you're not sitting and watching no, TV. Maybe your kitchen co- table. But even, th- I think they're more comfortable because they sure. have pads, you know, sure. or you can get pads for those. Right. Um, and, uh, well, how about when you, you know, it really killed me when, when you told them to come in and put their table wherever they wanted. Right. Yeah. You know, I think that's, that's, that's unheard of. And, and yeah. how did that go? I, it, it went well. I mean, funny enough, the tables ended back up exactly where they would normally be. Yeah. Um, again, I think, you know. But that's a compliment to you. Like, maybe, maybe that was a good choice by you. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe that's just the way they are most comfortable. But they will, they'll, you know, if they're working in teams and things like that, they'll pull tables apart and Break get off. them a little more comfortable. Um, you know, I have had students sit on the floor or, you know, sometimes they turn their chair around and okay. they sit so they can kind of hang over the back. You know, my whole thing is, like, I try and think about what is it like when I'm learning. And if I'm stuck in that same position... You know, right. forever. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, and I don't think about learning. I'm thinking about Man, when am I going to get a break to get up? Or, this sucks. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it, and I know you've tried. You 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 brought in. You got rid of desks. This we year. got totally rid of desks, which was which was scary because uh, now these awesome tables are, are huge, and there's a lot of room uh, for the kids to work, but there is nothing for them to hold their their belongings. You know, okay. where the the desks they put everything in. So now things are in their in their lockers and and it was a struggle because it, it was counterproductive to have them and we didn't start this way but the the thinking process was after every period they're going to have to run back and forth for their stuff you know not that we can't handle transitions but that's a lot of transitions which would take away from that time on task so we did start to develop systems where the kids would have book bins and, and everything they need from the morning till lunch and then we'd have pictures on the board for visual reminders that's awesome. Because um, it, it is, it's tough, and, and, and it's easy to put stuff down and walk away from it. Organization is, is something I struggle with. Um, but the tables have been such a huge improvement. We're dealing with laptops. We're, we're with the making in the classroom. Right, right. You know, they have so much area. And they're flat instead of, you know, desks are always at some little bit of an angle. We were doing science experiments with pushes and pulls, and, and it's just we weren't getting the results that the books were like, yeah, these are the correct answers. This is what the kids should be finding and that was another beautiful thing it's like guys this is what you're supposed to find why don't you think you're finding you know why don't you think if this is happening it was because um, of your desks it was definitely because of the desks and okay. and, it, and one you know the, the the tables were supposed to be four feet off the ground we were supposed to be using five feet of string um and at the time those desks just didn't they didn't match those standards um that's one of, but we are still stuck with with those same types of chairs Right. Which is why, you know, we've written grants before and that didn't get accepted, so we're, we're finding other alternatives to bring things in because it, it is uncomfortable. And, and to talk about going on the floor, you know, we asked for some some mats for the kids to be able to start sitting on. Because okay. it is uncomfortable. And if, and if you're thinking I'm uncomfortable, what you're not thinking about is, you What's know, going on in class. What, yeah. Yeah, what they're supposed to be focusing on. Yeah. Uh, but, that's, but that's enjoyable to, to, to see them come into the class. And to hear other kids come into the class and go, whoa, this place is awesome. Like, yeah, yeah. it's awesome. And I, like you said, I mean, you know, some of the, the struggles, you know, of 
how to have them transition with books and things. But you know, really, it's a it's a skill that it may be a struggle now, but it's a skill that they're learning because Most definitely. you know, going into middle school, you're moving right. from class to class, so you have to know what stuff you need from your locker so you can get to class to class. So and that's that's it. Thing. I tell them all the time. I don't want to I don't want to teach you third grade. You know, I want to I want to get you ready for not only fourth grade, but you know, the, for the rest of your life. Right. Being organized is is important, and and I didn't necessarily learn it early on enough in in my life. So you yeah. know, now I'm working on it and, right. and becoming I think better and better at it every day. Yeah, and good. I mean, it's good they can see you're working at it too. You know, you're, you 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 deal with it as well. Oh, many many times they hear it. Now, where did I put that? Yeah, exactly. Where's my coffee? I mean. Um, you know, one of the other things I, I tried this year was, you know, I always struggle with rubrics for, you know, group projects because a lot of what I do is group projects. Right. Um, you know, and I tried doing a spreadsheet this year where students could check off what they did, what they accomplished, what they didn't. Um, and it was a disaster. I, um, <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't a disaster. Well, I mean, they were confused by it because it's nothing, it was nothing like they had before. And of what course. I probably should have done was spent, you know, a a period going over how to use it, um, you know, but it's still but that's something your I'm constraint, working. right? Yeah. That's your constraint. You have these kids for 45, 45 days, it, one period a day, but but you don't always get that, right? Not to account for you know special uh, occurrences, right? You know, or concerts, concerts, and things like that. You know, but yeah. So that that was one of the other things I you know I tried and, and was a struggle and maybe not a success this time, right? And um, you know, we, we started new report cards last year, so right. so the standards-based grading, um, but I think that's the way to go. Right. You know, how are, are you achieving success? Are you, are you great? Are you still struggling? Um, and then identifying the areas that you want this project or, right. you know, that assignment to cover. Right. Um, but that's a good thing for them. You know, so what about, what about you? What are some of the things that you uh, well, have worked on this year? You know, we teach third grade and, and we have eight and nine year olds and I guess they come in as they come in as seven and eight year olds and, and it's it's a struggle and this year has been quite different than last year. Last year we started the making and, and started talking about what happens when something doesn't work and what are you doing to try and fix that and like you know we started the epic failure board right. and kids were on that board all over the place last year and they couldn't wait to, to put themselves on the board and we started it this year and it was such a different mindset where the kids, you know, their belief is, I don't want to be a failure. Right. And right. and we're trying to tell them that's this is the point. You know, you're not a failure. And and right. It's just this thing failed this time. And that's why we always put it. We it was great to put a dry erase shower board up there. So yeah. it's now a dry erase, and the kids can go up in different colored markers. And you know, I I did this and bombed. So now I'm going to in that's a different awesome. color. Um. So how they're going to try and fix that? So it's not a failure. Um. You know. And and that's. And that's fun now at the end of the year because things are catching on and, and the kids are going, hey, Mr. DiPaolo, you know what? <laughs> I should check that board with the pictures on it so I know what I need in the yeah. afternoon. I'm like, holy smokes, lights are going off. Yeah. Um, you know, so so things are, but it's but it's almost April. You know, yeah. so so this is, it, it's, it, it floored us. It, I, I co-teach with another uh, wonderful teacher, Kim Bray. Um, and, and, you know, we started the year with posters all around right. and, you know, those positive mindset and the kids are like, nope, I'm not a failure. I don't want to be called a failure. No way. Don't put me off on the board, Mr. DiPaolo. Right, right. So, so that was a little bit of a struggle, a little different than last year. We talked about the tables and, and that's just been an ultimate hit on one hand and, and that uh, accompanied with some struggles, sure. um, which, which we're, we're dealing with. The new curriculum this year has has really kind of thrown what we've been doing in the classroom to a whole new level, with the with the the readers workshop model, model with the specific curriculum to follow, right. um, accompanying guided reading, which is great. And I believe it was at Rewire put on a tabernacle where I saw Kate Baker talk about flipped learning and the use of playlists. Right. And, and it was unreal bringing this playlist in. Um, you know, now the kids are accountable. They have directions for things. It's, it's, they, at first we tried it on their laptops and, and putting it to them through Google Classroom and, and that was kind of a hot mess. So hopefully with the addition of Chromebooks, we can go paperless next year. 
And can you can you just explain like a little bit what the playlists are? Like what, oh, what is um, that? the I playlist guess? is it's almost like a, an iPod playlist. So okay. they they have right now a sheet of paper with four different activities for the kids to do. Uh, it's, it's one columns A, B, C, and D, and the date that they complete the activity. Okay. Uh, in the middle column is the specific activity. Uh, it might be a picture of a hero because the act, and then in the other column will be what they're supposed to do okay. um, about the hero. You know, they're reading and bringing in some so it's quality traits. Almost training. like a choice list. Um, um, it's it's their specific center activity. Like okay. the, the top item on the playlist is working with the teacher in the guided reading group. Okay. Um, and and they're great for the kids because it's their directions and what they're supposed to be doing awesome. in each center. Um, we wanted to have it linked up in Google Classroom because they do have to respond after reading for 20 minutes and, and bring in ideas like personality traits, specifically right now if we we're talking about reading and, and following that character. Um, That'll be great next year when you have to have Flipgrid to be able to have responses. With those cameras, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and that's that's what's exciting with, with the addition of the Chromebooks coming down to our third grade classrooms next year. Um, the laptops are great. There's some limitations. There are limitations, and, and with the Chromebook, I think those limitations will kind of start to disappear, and, and who knows, maybe we'll get new issues that we'll have to overcome, um, but the playlists have been great, and it's and it's a way when we're alternating social studies one week, science the next week, the week we're specifically teaching science on the playlist or social studies activities, oh, that's so, awesome. so the kids are never really abandoning social studies. That's great. Um, or specifically science. Right, right. We had started in our science curriculum it was social studies weekly and it's an online has an online component to it so the kids are able to, to listen to articles they're able to work with a character which is affectionately named rev rat and uh, okay. <laughs> perform different activities to cool. to yeah i guess to you know he's got a home so he wants a bean bag so you have to gain a certain amount of coins by answering questions or completing oh, so activities. So gamifying the learning. Yes, yeah, yep. cool. and, it, yeah. and it, it, it's, it's hilarious because during the, the personal development on the curriculum, I'm thinking, a rat? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> the kids are going to be like, a rat, really? But you know what? They love the rat. They love rat. <laughs> um, and then with science, we had started a new science curriculum last year, and this year we um, our, our curriculum coordinator had gotten us something called Gizmos. Yeah, which yeah. is an online yep. resource where the kids are able to get online and, and really work with different um, features and change things and, and perform experiments like flying um, carts down a hallway and changing cool. the, the surface of the hallway, which, you know, we, we've definitely, I'm not going to say we haven't thrown chairs down the hallway to talk about <laughs> what might happen, you know, between but this less chair. trouble. Well, most You can get into less trouble. I don't want to say less most. trouble. I say you can use more toys when, okay, you're, yeah, you know, yeah. like you're throwing all kinds of stuff down that hallway. Um, and it's, you know, that's, once again, when we're teaching the science curriculum, that's an activity that the kids can do during reading to keep, when we're, I'm sorry, when we're teaching social, social studies, studies curriculum, this is an activity where that keeps science um, fresh yeah, in their mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're able to dig a little deeper and, and think about things. So you're, you're liking gizmos? I, mean, I like, most definitely. Cool. Um, right. The more we get into it, the... You know, the the more we're able to see what the kids can do, and there's different activities with That's it. Awesome. And, the, and what's awesome is the kids are going home, and they're like, "Oh, look, can I do?" You know, Get we're doing. At home. We show them activity A. They do activity B on their own, and nice. then yeah, they're coming in. Oh, I did see, and this is what happened. Oh, that's awesome. Um, this week we're doing the landforms, or I'm sorry, last week in social studies we were focusing on U.S. landforms. So one of the playlists was that activities came with a choice board, and this choice board had different ways of showing us what you learned about landforms. Of course, we learned landforms with a volcano. So one of the activities on the choice board was construct a volcano. A volcano. Nice. Extra points if you can make it explode. Nice. Well, yesterday, and it's great because I don't have a phone. Um, my co-teacher brought her phone in, so she yep. was able to take video. Um, three kids made volcanoes, and, and you know the worst thing about it? The other kids doing the other centers were so distracted. By the volcano. I don't know how, how much you know that other work got done, but... Uh, you know, it's it's just cool to see their excitement about it. Cool, that's awesome. Yeah, most definitely. So, uh, I guess one of the takeaways from this episode, I mean, try some flexible seating, try giving some choice in seating. Um, choice in activities. Choice in activities, you know. and maybe even look at gizmos. I know you can get some free trials to, to there, work on gizmos. There's a lot of, there. Are, I don't want to say a lot, but in 
all the different topics, there are free, there are free, a, free activities. activities. Yep. That's awesome. So uh, that's some of the stuff we've tried this year, some of the successes and failures that we may have had this year. Um, you know, one thing I didn't mention, I guess, in the beginning is, I, I know you said you teach third grade. Yeah, I teach technology um, and, like, STEM education for third grade to eighth grade. So, you know, I, I have a big gap in, uh, in the age of students that I teach. And, and when I first mm -hmm. started getting into making, I, I thought you were going to have it made because you have older kids and right. they'd be able to do more things. Um, and, and not that those kids can't, you know, the things they do, it's amazing. Yeah. But I have the kids all day. Yeah. So I'm not, I don't have that time constraint right. where it's, oh, I only have them for 42 minutes and I only have them for 45 days. Right. Compared to, yeah, I have them 181 days yeah. and, uh, and I could use a couple more days. Yeah, right. Um, so that's been our first episode. Uh, Lots of fun. Hope you join us again for our next episode. We are the Teacher Nerds, Ron Nober and Joe DiPaolo. Have a good one. Take care. Woo, that's 16 down. minutes. <clears throat> <clears throat>